The treatment landscape for Lyme disease has undergone significant evolution over the years, offering a wider range of options to manage the multifaceted illness. When I first began treating Lyme disease in 1987, the primary antibiotic prescribed was doxycycline. This choice was driven by doxycycline's effectiveness not only against Lyme disease itself, but also against co-infections such as Ehrlichia and anaplasmosis. These co-infections, often transmitted by the same ticks that carry Lyme disease, present additional challenges in patients' management. However, when patients couldn't tolerate doxycycline due to side effects or failure to respond to the treatment, rifampin emerged as a viable alternative. For pediatric patients, the treatment approach required special consideration. Moxicillin was commonly used to avoid the risk of dental staining associated with doxycycline, which can be a concern for growing children. However, the limitation of amoxicillin lies in its inability to combat co-infections like Ehrlichia or anaplasmosis. Over time, other antibiotics related to amoxicillin, such as PenVK, IM Bicillin, Omniceft, and Ceftin became available. Of these, Ceftin, the generic name being Cefuroxine, of these, Ceftin is the only antibiotic that's FDA-approved for Lyme disease, reinforcing its role in the treatment regimen. When dealing with neurologic Lyme disease, which can involve the central nervous system and present with symptoms such as memory loss, cognitive difficulties, and neuropathy, the approach often necessitates more aggressive treatment. Intravenous antibiotics like ceftriaxone and clafrin were preferred due to their ability to cross the blood-brain barrier a crucial factor in effectively treating neurologic manifestations. These IV antibiotics are essential for some patients, particularly those with severe or persistent symptoms, but they are not without risk. The use of a PICC line for IV administration carries potential complications, including infections and blood clots. Interestingly, in my experience, many patients with chronic neurologic Lyme disease have shown significant improvement with oral antibiotics, allowing them to avoid the complexities and risk associated with IV treatments. For patients who are allergic to or unable to tolerate doxycycline, or for those who are sun-sensitive, a common side effect of doxycycline, Zithromax and Bioxin have emerged as effective alternatives. These antibiotics belong to the macrolide class and have shown efficiency comparable to doxycycline in a majority of clinical studies, offering additional options for patient care. In the treatment of co-infections like Bartonella, the approach becomes more nuanced. Bartonella, initially identified as a causative agent of cat scratch fever, has been a subject of ongoing debate in the context of Lyme disease. This bacterium is traditionally associated with transmission through cat scratches where the bacteria are introduced under the skin from cat saliva or flea feces. However, there's a growing evidence suggesting that Bartonella may also be transmitted via tick bites, complicating the clinical picture for Lyme disease patients. In treating suspected Bartonella co-infections, I have employed antibiotics like doxycycline, Zithromax, Rifampin, and Bactrim, drawing on research related to cat scratch fever. Additionally, I have used Bactrim. In treating suspected Bartonella co-infections, I have employed antibiotics from the doxycycline, Zithromax, and Rifampin families, drawing on research related to cat scratch fever. Additionally, I have used Bactrim in some cases. However, I generally avoid fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxin due to their association with severe side effects, including joint pain, tendonitis, and tendon ruptures. A common co-infection found in Lyme disease patients requires a different treatment approach altogether. Babesia is a parasite that infects red blood cells. For treating Babesia, I often prescribe a tovacone available in liquid form as Mepron or in a pill form as Maleron. Maleron, which combines a tovacone with pergonal is well known for its use in preventing and treating malaria.
I typically combine Atovacone with other antibiotics, most commonly Zithromax, based on protocols established by experts like Dr. Krauss and his colleagues. The duration of treatment with Atovacone and Azithromycin is tailored to each patient's response, emphasizing the importance of personalized care in managing Lyme disease and its co-infections. Additionally, I have found that tinidazole and metronidazole can be helpful in certain cases, particularly when used in combination with other medications. These drugs are known to disrupt biofilms in the lab, which are complex communities of bacteria that are resistant to standard antibiotics. Although the exact mechanism by which these drugs work in Lyme disease patients is not fully understood, they have shown some effectiveness in clinical practice. Patients on these medications must avoid alcohol, as even small amounts can cause severe reactions. As Lyme disease research continues to evolve, so do the treatment options. Recent advances have introduced new combination therapies based on laboratory evidence. These include disulfiram, a drug traditionally used to treat alcohol dependence, a combination of daptomycin, minocycline, and rifampin, and a regimen known as double-dose dapsone, which includes doxycycline, rifampin, and anhydroxychloroquine. These approaches are designed to target biofilms and persistent cells, bacteria that survive despite standard treatment. The concept of persisters adapted from tuberculosis research suggests that some bacteria are not resistant per se, but they enter a dormant state that makes them difficult to eradicate. While these treatments show promise in laboratory studies, I remain cautious about integrating them into clinical practice until there's more data available. Ultimately, Lyme disease treatment is highly individualized. Each patient responds differently to various treatment protocols, and decisions must be guided by the specific infections involved and the patient's clinical presentations. The evolution of treatment options reflects the ongoing commitment to providing the most effective care possible, tailored to the unique needs of each patient. As we continue to learn more about Lyme disease and its co-infections, it's essential to stay informed and adaptable, ensuring that patients receive the best care based on the latest evidence.